Welcome back to another day in the arena, and we are going to continue to go down the line of the starter decks in Starter Deck Duel. Last time we covered Arcane Aggression, and I was pretty high on that deck. In this video, however, we're going to be looking at Charging Ahead. It is our Gruul version of the starter decks, and I was taking a look at this deck a little bit earlier, and you're basically getting your typical Gruul, get in there, get in there hot and heavy, nice and fast, hit the opponent really quickly with bigger and bigger creatures every turn. Where I was really high on arcane aggression i'm not so sure why where i stand on this particular deck this particular build but uh stick with me till the end of the video and we will discuss exactly what i think about this deck and how good i actually think it did in this limited format first off let's talk about what we are doing to set up well we're setting up with things like felden ronam excavator he allows us to get a couple of cards from our library in best case scenario in worst case scenario he is a 2-2 with haste for two so pretty decent upside if we could get it off but no real downside to the card either one of the things that this deck is going to struggle with is getting cards and felden helps to do that at least a little bit we also have things like Sprouting Goblin to go get a land. We have things that get bigger at the end of the game with a Vishaino Branch Rider. So he, he's going to be able to either come in a little bit bigger or we could grow him, dump some mana into him later on in the game, make him a little bit bigger, a real threat on the board in the later stages of the game. We also have a couple of Colossal Growths that go along with this theme of growing things, making them bigger. Nice little kicker as well. A lot of kicking action in the early part of the game, especially. And then, of course, you have a couple of fight spells. Cosmic Hunger hits basically anything, whereas Epic Confrontation deals damage to a creature, but it also gets the upside of giving that creature that you're attacking with plus one, plus two. It's also a fight, so if worse comes to worse, we can make something deal damage to Felden and get some stuff out of the library that way. Of course, our Mana Rock. Here he is. And we get to add a mana of any color. We control a Creature with power 4 or greater, add 2 mana instead. It's fantastic because a lot of the stuff in here is going to have power 4 or greater, such as a Furnished Rider and etc, etc, etc. There we go. That's our turn 1, turn 2. Basically, what we're doing is we're setting up. We have our removal with fight spells, basically, with these 6 right here. We can make our guys bigger. That's what we're doing turn 2. What are we doing turn 3 and beyond? Well, Samet. Visor of Nactuman. I believe I said that right. But first strike, vigilance, haste for three, one green, one red, one generic. And whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn, draw a card. So we're kind of leaning kind of heavily into a haste strategy. And uh, we could get that off with a couple of different things like the Tamakul Phoenix. The Warmonger already has haste. And he could get a dragon out of our, our library whenever he attacks. You look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card from among them. Put it into your hand, etc., etc. So we get dragons out of our library as well as getting some damage off. Hasty Boy damage, which draws a card with Samet. Also stuff like Dragon Whelp does not have haste, but there is a way to give people haste in here. And that is in part done by Furnace Strider. He could give a target creature haste if you take two oil counters off of it. And he starts with two oil counters on him. No real ways to put many oil counters onto your creatures, which is a shame. But it is something that we're going to have to deal with with the starter decks. Our dragons, the Volcanic Dragon, as well as Shivan Branch Burner, they both have haste. Ravenous Sailback can have haste as well, but if there isn't an artifact or enchantment on the field, then we could, uh, of course, destroy that instead, which is usually the better move. But that's how we're getting haste on our guys. We have a couple of the Furnished Riders, and then most of our creatures actually end up having haste anyway, like the Rampaging Dinosaur, etc., etc. So that's what Samut's doing, trying to get us a bit of card advantage. 
and we're, we're going to see if it actually works. I would love to see ways to draw and get things into exile with red, you know, exile the top two cards. You can play them until the end of your next turn, but we don't have that kind of luxury in here, and it doesn't seem like it really needs it. So, yeah. Tamako Phoenix is really nice to get out of the graveyard. I... I from what I've seen, one red and two generic can cast him from the graveyard at almost any time. Flying, haste, and so I, I don't know if you guys are seeing the theme or not, but it's going to be a lot of flying and haste. I also like how they reprinted uh, Dragon Whelp here. Dragon Whelp being one of the classics of Magic the Gathering. I started seeing cards at least with this of action way back in the day, and... It's been a staple of red for a long time. If you need a place to dump mana, a Dragon Whelp is not a bad place to do it. Flying for one red, it gets plus one, plus zero till the end of turn. And you have to sacrifice it if it's been activated four or more times. So a bit of downside to it because you could only make him so big. But it is a nice little mana sink if you're later on in the game. Orc Battle Driver is the way that we give all of our creatures haste. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield, gets plus two, plus zero, gains haste till the end of turn. That's even better than the Furnace Strider that could only do that a couple of times. But between these three cards right here, we're expecting to have haste on most of our guys throughout most of the game. The rest of this stuff is just big stompies, big stompies. All right, so that is the deck in a nutshell. As said, I don't think this one is as good as Arcane Aggression, which was the first episode of the series, but it should be good enough to get some wins. We're going to see how consistent it is. Gruel hasn't been that great lately, and hopefully we are corrected in that, that mindset. Thank you for joining today. Make sure that you have liked the video and subscribed to the channel. We're going to get into the matches, see how this does, and stick around for the post-game wrap to see if I would rate this as a good deck, okay deck, or a bad deck. See you in a moment. We got the red, we've got the green mana, things to do on turn two, but we are lacking that second red for the phoenix there. Hmm. So expensive. I think we mulligan this in hopes to get mana ramp we did not get the mana ramp we got a little bit worse of a hand but i think we stick with this anyway we don't want to mulligan down to five i hate doing it if there's any way that i could avoid it i will and the warmonger here is a way that i could do that i could avoid that cool we got the um the phoenix here but if he doesn't play any creatures this turn we go with the warmonger Looks like we're reversing the Selesnia deck, and that is definitely, definitely not what we wanted to see. Huh, he might not be blocking it. Let's test that theory. Warmonger, swing. He might want to keep the Trumpeteer. Let's see how much he does. Yeah, he does. He wants to keep it. That works out for us. It allows us to get our big boys into our hand. So we don't draw them. <laughs> That's good, right? Also do epic confrontation to make sure that this gets out of our way. So it's not such a dangerous swing every single time. Duelist, Dark Legion Duelist. Uh-huh, an enduring bond warden on the duelist. <laughs> That's so good. All right, we might be in trouble here in this first game. There we go. Get it out of the way. Then we swing. Yep, grabbing some guys out of the library. And he's taking it again. A little dangerous to continue to take the warmonger especially with mana drops every turn haven't hit any of our mana ramp none of our dorks but it is what it is and here we go searches for a lamb puts it onto the battlefield tap shuffles put two one one counters on target artifact there we go or creature yeah artifact or creature a little strange but 
It did its job, apparently. Huh. Come in for two. We're starting to build that mana base up. Planes. Citizens arrest. Probably on the Phoenix. Oh, good. The Sailbat can kill the citizens arrest here. Okay, Beast Caller. Very good. No swings. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Start putting big boys out. Huh. No attacks. Thinking real hard about this one. Maybe worried about how to get past the Surak and Goreclaw. Oh, wow. That could do it. The big card right there. Create two bears. Just put two 1-1 one -one counters on each creature you control. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big board state. And we draw another dragon. He's got Convoke. Let's do it like this. Since he wants to just hang back and chill. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. That one. We'll get our Phoenix back. We grow our things. We swing in the air for three. And then we pass a turn and he scoops. I guess no way to deal with the flyers. The constant pressure. And the Sirak and Gore Claw, making sure that all of our flyers are going to come in much larger. He knows we have flyers in our hand. So, okay, I accept it. That is a victory. And here we go. We got green, we've got red. Both colors, that's always good. Uh, man, again, Warmonger in the hand. We had a similar hand last time and did pretty well. So, we're going to roll with it and see what happens. Rugged Highlands comes out first, followed by Mountain Mountain. At least that's what it looks like it's shaping out for the first three turns. Rugged Highlands, Mountain Mountain, Warmonger. Swamp. And we get the Sanatorium Skeleton. Very good and limited. Also... Pretty good card in mono black sack decks. This card's definitely got its place. And we have a bog come down, geothermal bog. So the red black sack deck it looks like. Totally fine, comes in for one. And we get a green mana. Colossal growth, not what we want. I guess we could grow the skeleton for him, but that wouldn't be any fun for us. It'd be nothing but sad and misery. Another bog. Gixian Infiltrator. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, put a 1-1 one -one counter on that. That's actually quite dangerous for us if he has enough things to start the sack outlet with a skeleton. And we draw more land as we are wont to do. Uh, he doesn't block this. I highly doubt he blocks this and we get nothing. Well, there goes our uh, mana. Mana dork. There he goes. Say goodbye. Nothing good happened. He does take it though. He does not block. Pona having to read these cards. I'm guessing newer player to the game. So we're gonna school him on how to play these. Here we go with the etched familiar. When it dies, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That's nice, but no way to sacrifice creatures quite yet. Wanted to swing, but chose not to. Nah, he's coming in. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, yep, he is. <laughs> there he goes. He'll figure it all out. I, I have faith. We swing. Nothing again? Wow. Wow. Down to 14. Keep building mana. Go with the dragon whelp. So, 
if this guy is new, he does understand the value of using life total as an actual resource in and of itself. So he, he's not blocking this. He's not afraid of taking the damage. That's positive. That's good. And there you go. He's got a Storm Claw Rager out now. That is a way that he could start sacking things. He could sack them for one. He's swinging with this, however. So we're going to take this block. Bit of an aggressive swing there. Hmm. Not a whole lot I would want to do here. Except for maybe growing the whelp one and swinging for three. We're going to leave the warmonger up to block and kill something. Maybe throw in a colossal growth on it to get some added value out of it. Though I would want colossal growth to come at somebody's face. So maybe we're not doing that. I think the warmonger is probably enough to scare a timid player into not doing anything at all. We're just playing it by ear, guys. And he makes a sack. Grows the rager. And the intervention. Um, okay. Uh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Comes on in with the rager. And we're going to show the opponent that you should not be afraid of using your creatures to get rid of your opponent's creatures. Oh, when he dies, or is put in exile, return it to his owner's hand. We're, we are going to use a colossal growth in this way. He should have waited to use Ashnod's intervention and use it as a trick. Because after blocks are declared, there's one more stage where you could play instances. All right, come on over. Make the block. Let's think about this. Five. Three, or two and three is five. It still dies, so we add a four, four to it. Just till the end of the turn. Keeps our guy big. It returns to the hand, but I would say that we're pretty far ahead here. And we're swinging. Nothing again. Oh my god. Uh, maybe we need more dragons in this deck to make Warmonger worth playing. Yep. Awesome. We lose two life. He gains two life. And then we respawn with Surak and Goreclaw. Mana for turn. Got removal. He responds with a Wrinkle and Torbran. Haven't played a lot of standard recently, guys, so let me look at this for a second. Flying First Strike Haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player battle, each player creates a treasure. Each player sacrifices a creature. Choose any number of those. Okay. Well, interesting. That certainly is a little bit of a buzzkill, isn't it? Well, let's respond with Shivan. Branch Burner. 1-1 one, one Counter. Has Haste already. Now he has Trample, Flying, Haste. And we have that Surak and Goreclaw coming in for a 6 as well. It's a lot of damage. This is 11. So opponent willing to go down to 1 here. Testament Bearer. When he dies, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Comes in for three, and that looks like it's match. Yep, sacrifices a creature. Gonna be the whelp. He's gonna sacrifice a bearer. No. Okay, that's just game, guys. Wait. Am I already too late? I would like to throw another dragon on the field. Ah, I got too carried away. There we go. 
There's the block. We might as well pump. Pump. And then pump. Awesome. Two five. Two, two sources of five damage. Wow, words are hard sometimes. But, yep, that'll do it. That gets him off of the field dead. And uh, we are 2-0 and o now with the deck. 2-0. and o. No green mana. And this is the first time we've seen the car... Carated? Carated. Carried. I'm going to call him Carry. It's the first time we've seen Carry, but we got to get rid of it. We got Carry again. That feels so much better. Just calling him Carry. Throw away the one drop. We're going to hopefully ramp pretty quickly here. Okay, good card. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> so, Kami of Whispered Hopes. This seems to be a popular deck out there. Drop it down. Cosmic hun Hunger. Let's see. Do we need to remove this? If one or more... Yeah, we might as well. We'll wait, though. We will wait. We are patient. Oh. See? We snuck a card out of his hand. You could add the mana... And maybe he has protection? He doesn't. He does get to get a land out, though. That's good for him. Still growing. Plus one, plus two, and fights. We'll deal with his early game here. And now we can start using the ramp on him to get the bigger stuff out. More life gain for the opponent. Highlands again. Let's go with the Strider. And swing. Bam. There's five damage. Able to ramp into that fairly effectively. It's not the best growth I've ever seen, but we got rid of a couple of good threats from the opponent as well. Titania's Command. Good card. Very good card. question is, how do you use it to win? Trample. Haste. 4-4. Four, four. Wait. Why can I do that? Okay. Oh, right. Because this counts as 3 mana now. Pretty good stuff. Come in for 8. He takes a full 8. Could have made that 10. But I don't think it's really going to matter that much. Fight. Okay. We'll fight. Got him. 1-1 one, one, reach death touch. Pretty good stuff. Comes in for 4. Totally fine. Now we have more cards than the opponent. Sometimes that doesn't matter, but in this case, it certainly does. Oh, man, that's not great. Let's go with the Sailback. Haste. And swing. We're going to swing with this as well. Yep, he's going to take out that 4-5. 100% fine. Go ahead and race, buddy. If you're feeling brave, let's race. Oh, wow. It's a big boy now. Holds back. We drop the whelp, and then we pass. Now, we don't need a swing. We just let a creature die and get, what, one damage off? Yep, that's not doesn't have reach. So we're in really good shape here. Goes my turn, and we're just gonna pump him. One, two, 
three. That's all we can pump him without having to sack him, and then we swing. And victory is ours. Glory to the strength of Gruel. I'm going to keep mostly because we have carry over here. We also have Felden. So we have things we could do. We're going to start with carry. We'll probably drop in uh, Felda next, but we shall see. Tap to land another grove. And it looks like a past turn. I'm going to kick it. The Sprouting Goblin will get the land that we need for the turn out of our library. And I think we want a second red source. Yeah, we pass. Green mana and the recluse. Recluse is a good card. And there's a fight. He says, oops. <laughs> he wanted the sprouting goblin, but alas, he does not get it. We swing. We go with a battle driver and we pass back to the opponent. We got five damage on a field, which is good. But I think the opponent's doing pretty well keeping up with this. A little bit of a mistake letting the Sprouting Goblin live, but you know, beggars and choosers, beggars and choosers. And Curian Beast Caller is looking awfully dangerous already. Counting this, we have enough for this and a growth. We're going to use that growth. Swing. He's going to do some blocking here. Um. Do it like this. We'll let that live. We have the fight here, but there's no reason to use a fight on that 2-3. Just too small to do any real dam damage. Let me look at Felden for just one second. When he's dealt damage, exile that many cards. Choose one of them. Okay, gets the um, Orc Driver off, or Battle Driver off. Go with this. No, not this one. Yeah, yeah, it is that one. Do this between these two. Now, until the end of my next turn, I could play that. Five. We're going to want the sell back. And then we swing in for five more. Down to eight. Sell back comes out next. It gets back our battle driver. And we have a pretty wide board state. Hasty aggro -y deck. I like it. There are some problems with it, and we will talk about those in just a second. Well, same but different. We're going to kill that clay champion right now. Gets rid of it. Down to one. And I guess we could kill that citizen's arrest with the Migala's Maze Crusher. But there's no reason to do it because opponent is out. Vishaina Branch Rider. The Warmonger. Epic Confrontation. Mana Ramp. Yep. Oh, we are keeping this. Hey, we're in the Shire. You gotta eat the food, guys. And here we go. Another tapped land. I think we want this land first so that we could get our carry out so that next turn we can cloak warmonger we could warmonger swamp all right so ruin my plan ruin my day actually that's the gorge that's uh, 
and the actual rare land in here. That's good. We'll go with the Warmonger and start to get our dragons out of our library and into our hand. Char Forger. Create a 1-1 one, one whenever another artifact... Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into the graveyard from battlefield, put an oil counter on this. Remove three oil counters. Exile the top card of your library. Okay. We're swinging. Nothing. Trade? No? Okay. Let's do it like this then. And end the turn. Missed a little bit of damage there, but I was expecting a, an attempt at blocking. All right, the Testament Bearer is out. That's one damage to us, which is fine. Flying Vigilance Haste. Come on out. Swing. Get the whelp to the hand. Opponent. Is he going to block Samet? What a blessing. What a blessing. All right, all right, there you go. We do get to draw a card. Man, oh man. The Shuffler is trying its best to kill us. Swamp. And Samet is dead. But we have plenty of cards. Could drop this for one. But we're so far ahead on cards that I'm just happy to pass. Next turn, probably a Dragon Whelp. At least that's what it's looking like right now. Tapped mana and another Testament Bearer. Go to my turn. So, Dragon Whelp or the Sailback are both kind of smart moves. But what if we were to do this? There's a Whelp. There's Vishaino. Branch Rider. And we won't attack. He might be swinging just to try to get into this a little bit. He's really far behind. He should be the aggressor because of his life total. Or his hand size. That's what I meant to say. His hand size. We're going to come out here and block this. He's going to sack it. Or not. Those are the top three. Puts one into your hand. The rest into the graveyard. He put a sanitarium skeleton and infiltrator into the bin. I almost think we could win just with what we have on the board right now, but it's always better to continue to grow. Let's go with the sail back, gain haste, swing. There's five more damage. Down to seven. Mishra. Cute. Cute. And the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Nine, huh? Well, we need to keep one, two, three open. I could grow this three. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's perfect. One, two, three. And then we come in for the swing. Here's the swing. 
I did not use my Colossal Growth. Wow. Can I, can I go back? <laughs> oh no. Oops. Whatever, we got him next turn. All swing. We might not have him next turn. Oh man, I had him. 9, 10, 11, 12. Three damage to any target, he should be doing that. Definitely. To kill the whelp. He needs to kill that whelp. Menace and trample, doesn't matter. Menace would actually kill me. So, probably menace is the way to do it. Might as well try to protect him right now. And he's got the menace anyway. So he's got it. He's won. I done played myself. Should have won that and ended up taking a loss. But uh, you know what, opponent? You deserve this one. Welcome back, and we are here for the post-game wrap. <laughs> it, this, this did almost exactly how I thought it would do. It did not fare well. This deck probably would not pass my playtest at all. It's just too slow. There's so many other powerful things out there, and Cosmic Hunger and Epic Confrontation don't get up to some of the big things that are happening in these decks. Quite often, you could do a Colossal Growth and then an Epic Confrontation and you're looking okay. Uh, but it's just too slow. There's not enough mana ramp in here. Kerry did some, but Kerry did not do enough because there's only three copies of this in the deck. There's only three mana dorks in the entire deck, and I think that that really limits what you're able to do with this. Another thing, as my suspicion was, it was very hard to be drawing cards. Uh, like, I, I really like drawing cards. I play a lot of blue because there's a lot of card draw in blue. And we just don't have it in this deck. It just doesn't do what it needs to do to get the job done. We still won three games. And then I lost three games in a row. Uh, one of them was I screwed up. Should have won that game. But it just didn't happen. But this deck just doesn't have enough interaction with the board. It relies on your creatures getting larger and larger every turn. And currently, Gruul suffers from a lack of large creatures that interact well on the board state. And that's just what is making this deck not nearly as strong as it could otherwise be. I'm going to have to say, if you're playing in starter deck duel area this probably is not the deck that you want to be going in with you will win your fair bit of matches but you'll also lose a fair bit of those matches as well well thank you for joining today make sure that you've liked the video subscribe to the channel and i will see you in episode three bye